The Avalon Marshes is a sacred landscape filled with many beautiful trees. In this short video series, I'll be taking you on a journey to meet some of these beloved beings that grace the landscape here in Avalon, beginning with the marshes. So willow is a tree that loves to have its feet firmly in the water. It loves being close to water. And you can see this is one example where the tree is just growing super close to this brackish water. And it's just the perfect environment for it. It's starting to put out little catkins, which you probably can't see, but I'll try and get a close up shot. Here in the Avalon marshes, there are several different species of willow and who knows, I don't know if anyone's done any genetic studies on these, but I suspect there are probably some subspecies here that are quite unique to this area because a lot of willow reproduces clonally. And so I won't try and distinguish the willow species for you, but there are several here in the Avalon marshes. So on my travels, I've found this beautiful, really old pollarded willow. So this will have been cut quite near the base, young in its age to encourage multiple stems to grow. And then once these stems have uh, been, been sprouting, they've kind of been left to do their thing. It hasn't really been coppiced. This is neglected coppice or pollard. You can see it's just starting to put out some beautiful little flowers, the very tips of its long branches. So beautiful. So special to spend time with these beautiful beings. So this is a really amazing example of something that we don't see very often in UK ecosystems. You really find it in marshy, boggy areas. And in the forestry language, it's something known as a nurse log. So this fallen willow tree, which you can see is this clump of vegetation in the middle, has become a nurse for the other trees, the new saplings that are growing on top of the fallen tree and they are benefiting from the decaying release of nutrients from the fallen tree and are growing anew. So this is an amazing example of how the forest is interconnected and how all of the species are interwoven with each other. So here I am walking in one of the beautiful trackways here in the Avalon Marshes. Just been exploring the sweet track area and now I thought I'd see what beautiful trees I can show you here in the main part of the reserve. So along with our beautiful willow, there's a lot of amazing silver birch planted here. This is quite an old tree. It's quite difficult to age, to date trees, but I would say this is several decades old, this birch. They do grow quite fast, this species. And this is Betula pendula, the silver birch. really distinctive silvery bark and it's a native species here in the UK. There are several other birch species planted but this one is native. So another one of these sacred trees here in the Avalon marshes is of course the oak, Quercus roba. Now there are two species of oak in the UK, Cecil oak, Quercus petraea and pedunculate oak, Quercus roba, and they hybridize freely as well. 
but here we have a rather beautiful and elderly specimen, <laughs> uh, which I believe is Quercus roba. Although, of course, in winter, these things get a little bit more tricky because one of the key ways and to tell them apart is to do with the acorn, uh, the acorn structure. But you can see this is a classic characteristic of oak that some of the limbs on one side are kind of dying. Uh, they also, in elderly oaks, have this thing called stag-headedness, where elderly branches at the top begin to die back. And this is a natural ageing process of the tree, and the tree will continue to live for many, many, many years, even after parts of it have completely ceased activity. It's also a way that trees protect themselves against pest and disease damage is by literally shutting off, closing down the parts of the tree that become infected. And you can see this in a literal scar tissue that is created. If you took a core of the tree, you'd see where it had compartmentalized and blocked off that part of the tree. It's really fascinating. And this oak tree is supporting some wonderful epiphytic moss, which is a, a bryophyte. It's not the same as most plants. We kind of see around and about mosses are bryophytes. They're not vascular plants, which means that they, they don't have the same water carrying system that, uh, that vascular plants do. They're a kind of earlier, they use a more ancestral earlier form of water transport which doesn't mean that they're less evolved in any way. It just means that they're different and they have a different lifestyle. And in this case, it's enjoying photosynthesizing on the upper limbs of the oak tree where it can reach more light, capture more carbon from the sun. So oaks are quite late in bringing out their leaves. It probably won't bring out its leaves until kind of late April time, but it's a beautiful tree. So I've just taken a seat here in this magical little glade of birch trees, silver birch, around me. And I was wondering what it really was that I wanted to share in these nuggets, these little videos, this video series that I'm creating about the trees and the treescape of Avalon, which is my home. And one thing that's really important to me is how science and spirituality are so intricately linked for me that the breath of one becomes the breath of the other and the flow between the two and how my spiritual life impacts my life as a scientist is really interesting for me. So as I said, for me, they're very linked. And one thing that I find really empowering is knowing the names of species. Because when you know the names of things, when you see how this seemingly chaotic natural world has been made into these discrete bodies. This is really when all of nature can come alive for us in a different way, because we begin to see not only how the species are different from each other, but how they interrelate. So if you know an ash from an oak tree, it's even more amazing when you see them growing together in an intimate mixture. You start to wonder, how do they cooperate as two species? This is what my PhD was in, ecology, the science of interrelatedness between beings. And it's really no surprise to me that I've kind of made my way with journeying with community and the importance of human community because I've spent my academic life thus far studying how natural communities operate and there is always an element of chaos. In all of my PhD data, there was huge amounts of noise, kind of crazy patterns that was just the natural world doing its thing and not something that I, as the observer, can ever seek to control. And the same is true for some human relationships. We have elements that we can control and elements of the other that we can't control. And so, the overarching study of how all this fits together is ecology. And I offer its beauty 
to you today in the form of this magical birch glade. Blessed be.